ultimate seer. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. And he is the one who gives us eyes to see and ears to hear. And But the eyes to see part is what we have in historically not grabbed hold of. In other words, much of the prophetic movement has focused on the hearing. And we know that seers exist. We know that Samuel, before he was called a prophet, he was called a seer. We know that the realms of dreams and visions are real. But we have, as a prophetic movement, put a lot more emphasis on hearing than seeing. And about a year and a half ago now, God encountered me in a hotel room in Dallas and began to speak to me about raising up seeing people and seers, which is why back home in America we have the school of the seers. We have to have faith to see in the spirit just like we have faith to hear from God. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the spirit of God. Seeing in the spirit also comes by faith. But it's a different realm. It's a different expression. It's a different avenue. It's a different mode of communication. So God speaks to us many ways, and we need to be well-versed in all of them. We want to be those who are versatile in the spirit. We don't want to get pigeonholed into one way. Like I mentioned to you, in my early days of the prophetic, I heard, heard, heard. I didn't see as much. I had to be exposed to it. Many things as Christians, spiritual gift-wise, until we're exposed to a thing, we don't have the faith for it because we don't even know it exists. Or the other side of it is we're walking in a thing. We don't know anybody else who's walking the same walk or a similar walk. Therefore, we just don't know how to navigate what we're walking in. And so today we're going to do sort of a baseline of foundational teaching on the seer realm, unlocking faith to see in the spirit. We need faith to see in the spirit like we need faith to prophesy. It's the same dimension. So just like all believers can prophesy according to the will of God, all believers can see in the spirit when God chooses to open our eyes. Now, this is a little bit different with the seer realm because in the auditory realm, people can think they're hearing from God, but they're not. In the visual realm, yes, people can be seeing just imaginations or what the enemy is showing, but it's a little bit more distinct in the seer realm. You can't just sort of, well, you can. I was going to say you can't just sort of make up things, but you can and people do. For example, I believe wholeheartedly that many, many, many people that are having dreams and visions and having angelic encounters and going to heaven at will, I think they're making it up. I think some of these people, not all, I think some of them are just making it up because it sounds good. I believe people have written whole books full of false visions and encounters. But that said, I do believe that there are very real, very genuine, very uh, powerful encounters with the angelic, with heaven, in the seer realm. So we must learn to go in the right way. And the right way is by faith, God opening your eyes. We can't force ourselves to see in the spirit. We can't make ourselves see in the spirit. God is the one who opens our eyes. Now, we do see in the Bible that in the beginning, God created us in his image. Male and female, he created us in his image, in his image. So God is a seeing spirit. He's a seeing spirit. So he created us to see, not just with natural eyes, but with spiritual eyes. Paul said that, that, that our eyes may be enlightened. Open the eyes of my heart. We sing songs. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. We sing these songs. And we understand that our heart has eyes. But we don't always know how to step into that or navigate it or do with it what we should or what we're supposed to. One of the first things God said, he said, make, make, you know, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, take dominion. But God said, look. One of the first things he said to man was look. Some translations say see. Some translations say, behold, one of the first things God ever says to man is see, look, behold. And somehow we are wired, I don't know if it's by the, by the spirit of the age or, or by the, the, the unrenewed mind, we are wired to see the natural realm in such a magnified way that we often forget the spirit realm even exists. I can look at this bouquet of flowers. I can choose to try to look in the spirit. God has to open my eyes. But if I don't try to see it, 
If I close my eyes right now, guess what? I can't see you. Many of us, because we've not been taught, we don't know it's possible, or because of bad experience, have chosen to close our eyes to the spirit realm. When God is a seeing spirit, he lives on the inside of us. He wants to look through your eyes as if they're windows to the world. And he wants to show you what he's seeing. The Bible says, I will show you things to come. The Holy Spirit will show you things to come. You don't show me by my ears. You show me by my eyes. Show and tell. God will tell you things to come, but will also show you things to come. God loves to play show and tell. But we have focused so much on the telling side, on the hearing side, that many, many, many in the body of Christ have largely neglected the see around. So 1 Corinthians 12, 14, 4 and 11. There are various gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are various operations, but it is the same God who operates all of them in all people. Then we go through all the spiritual gifts. So any believer can manifest any of the gifts of the spirit anytime God wants. It's up to him. But we can choose to make ourselves available. We can choose to stretch our faith. We can choose to ask and keep on asking, to knock and keep on knocking. When it comes to the sea around, Jesus is the door. He's the door. He is the door to the supernatural. He is the door. The Holy Spirit leads us and guides us to Jesus. The Holy Spirit always leads and guides, leads us and guides us to Jesus. He always exalts us. He always exalts Jesus. Jesus is the door. So when you're going th through the seer realm, you're going through Jesus. When you're going through the auditory realm, you're going through Jesus. The spirit of prophecy is the testimony. Of, it's all about Jesus. Somebody say, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. So any believer can manifest any of the gifts of the Spirit anytime God sees fit. His gifts are to bless people whether saved or lost. We cannot choose to work a miracle, but we can believe in faith to walk in the miracle realm. I can't choose to heal anybody. No, I know it's God's will to heal. I know it's God's will to heal. I don't have to pray in the realm of healing, God let thy will be done. I know that it's God's will to heal. By his stripes you were healed. If you were healed, you are healed. We see over and over and over, the lepers come to Jesus, if you can heal me, if you can cleanse me. If I can, I can. Be thou healed, be thy cleansed. He can and he wants to. It's the same thing in the seer realm. But we see when we, when we, when we lay hands and pray by faith, we're, we're believing God to do something. We need to believe God to open our eyes. We need to be, believe God to see in the spirit. We need to believe God to show us things to come. We need to believe God. But we can't believe him. We can only believe him according to the measure of the faith that we've cultivated in our heart in that realm. So I have no problem all day long to believe for prophecy. I'll believe for, believe for, believe for. Interpretation of tongues, I've got some faith for that. Healing, I've got faith for that. Um, what are some of the other gifts? Uh, uh, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. i got faith for discerning of spirits all day. But our faith levels tend to be different with different gifts. We're more comfortable with certain gifts than others. So we have more faith to exercise this gift than that gift because of our natural experience, because of our spiritual gifting, because of how we've been wired. But I'm telling you that God is, have, is putting an emphasis on the seer realm in this hour. In the last days, he'll pour the spirit on all flesh. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. But what shall, what shall they do also? Dreams and visions. Seer realm. So prophesy came first. Seer realm came second. I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall have dreams. Your young men shall have visions. The, 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 the auditory realm came first. And then the seer realm came. And that's how it's been restored in the body of Christ. The first came the Nabi prophets. Now came the Chose prophets, the, the seer prophets. We're seeing it. So God is really emphasizing this in the season. And you need to grab hold of it. So we can't choose to work a miracle, but we can believe in faith to walk in the miracle realm. We can't choose to interpret tongues just because we want to. God has to give us the interpretation if he chooses. We can't force the spirit realm open and take a peek. But we can ask the Lord to open our eyes to show us what he wants us to see and walk with a sensitivity that makes us more aware of what he wants to show us. Now, those who have a special bent or a wiring to see in the spirit, it will come more naturally. I'm a writer by trade. When I was uh, five years old, we had to create this little book in our kindergarten class. Pictures, words. It was very simple. I was a kindergartner. But my kindergarten teacher 
prophesied to my mother. She didn't know she was prophesying, or maybe she did. She said, your daughter's going to be a writer. She's got a gift of communication. She's going to write. Now, I did not know that. My mother didn't know that, but, 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 but she knew that I have a natural gift for it. I mean, at five years old, how can you tell the difference? I guess because the teacher was used to seeing gifted students. Over, so they saw that. So I'm bent toward that. I'm bent to communicate. I am wired to communicate. So in the seer realm, if you're wired that way, it's not as hard for you. You're going to have more frequent visions and dreams. But others of you may not see much or at all. You've got to exercise your faith to bust through that realm. How many of you have uh, 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 visions frequently? How many of you have dreams frequently? See the dream? And this is another thing I've noticed all around the world. The dream realm seems more common than the vision realm. Isn't that interesting? And I think, I think one, one of the reasons is because it has less to do with us. When you're dreaming, it's like God just put, inserts yourself. I believe the vision realm, I believe that God may be trying to show us something, but many times in the vision realm, things start off as a faint impression, and if you don't take a second look, you won't see it. Like, it's, it's there, and you kind of, you kind of, but you don't look at it long enough to see it. You just let it go right by you. All right. 